Let's be positive though with Matt Gunn out of Twizel. Because he's always positive. It's summer now. There's no need to be bitching about the weather, mate. So much to talk about. Come on. Let's be positive. Of course. Just stop right there. Let's do that. No negativity. Let's be positive. LBP. LBP. Let's be positive. Well, Matt, where do we start? We've got to start with the cricket. Let's be positive. 11 years since we won in Hobart, 11 years since a men's national cricket side has won a game in Australia. For God's sake, mate. You were pathetic. Why would we start with that, trying to be positive? <laughs> I was going to mention the beautiful day down here, the still calm conditions, <laughs> sitting on. in the sun. Yeah. Got some jobs I should be doing. Should be doing. I'm ignoring them. Yes. I'm, just, I'm just enjoying the sun. And you hit me with a cricket. Well, I mean, I'd go there. Yeah, that's right. It's a World Cup. I that, forgot yeah, it was a World yeah, Cup. Yeah, it's a meaningful it match. And not only that, but you just, you played like us. That was the best thing. It was like watching the two teams in different jerseys. Well, this is one of the problems with cricket these days, is you never know what you're going to get, do you? It's a bit like the rugby world, the international rugby world for part of this year. Yeah, true. I mean, we flogged you. We should have We should have uh, had a cakewalk. <laughs> I should have. But uh, we got a young Didn't guy we? called Finn Allen who decided that your bowlers weren't as scary as they were in the Chapel Hadley series. Honestly, mate, watching it, I was almost embarrassed, actually, because I just thought, where was this in those three one days where we were giggling on the sideline and getting our pants pulled down? Where, where was this attitude? Does it really take one guy who's fearless to change a whole team's mindset? Well, maybe it does. But, I mean, if you think about it, to be fair, the times where the Black Caps have triumphed over the Australian cricket team is when they've taken them on. And... Um, it's pretty straightforward. That's that's when they always seem to be at their best mm. against Australia. Yeah, well, it's only you remember, one game. Like when they when they brought that when they brought the aggressive, the Mac attack style yep. that World Cup in Melbourne. Oh, Stacey. remember that one? <laughs> Came out hard, hard and fast. You know oh, what I mean? Quick start, <laughs> build a big score. Yeah, yeah. Batty Bat Bat went out after three balls because he can only play Batty Bat Bat. Oh, he can't right. play for his teammate, that. can he? Yeah, that's yeah. right. He can only bat like that because yeah, he can't you, bat you any other way. Style. You've mm. got to back the style. You can't take it as an individual performance. You've got to back the style. So anyway, that's what happened on that particular okay. occasion. Well, well, let's, yeah. let's park that then. Let's talk we, about the netball because the Constellation Cup, you absolutely did belt us, mate. And then now you've got a situation where net, Netball New Zealand has got a sponsor they don't want. Sorry, Netball Australia got a sponsor you don't want. You've got no money. You're bankrupt. What's going to happen now? Well, first and foremost, uh, two all in the series. Yeah, winning by seven goals doesn't quite doesn't quite sit right. It'd be nice to just have a drawn series, wouldn't it? Well, oh every... no, it's got to be on goals, home and away, and all the rest of it. Um, anyway, yes, okay, so we win that, and then we've got this controversy with the sponsor. And I suppose one of the quotes that most stuck out to me about this crazy situation. $15 million netball deal. I mean, they don't walk along every day, do they? No, they don't. Um, uh, this is where Australian Australian sport, uh, and netball in particular, has a real problem with um, the players' group. And, you know, unfortunately, um, that's the reality of it. Like, if you end up with sponsors on a program that you're doing that you don't like, you've got two choices, right, don't you? Yes. You either suck it up or you so walk that, away. That's the reality Pretty of it. Pretty much of it is. And so the question... The question then is, is, is it the right thing for you to do to take that opinion public and expect to keep the position? You know, and I'm not sure in most cases that that would be how it turns out in the real world. So no. the netballer, uh, Wattam, uh, she says, brings up the history of the family. You, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't bring up a, a, a better quote if you want to fight racism. You know, a terrible thought process at the time. He wasn't the only man with it. No one's saying it was the right thing to do. I think we've moved on from there. So. And to cause a sport $15 million worth of damage, um, just like that, because of the kind of Me Too movement days that we're in, don't think of the bigger picture at all. Say what you want first, because it's your truth. Yeah, that's right. You're living your life. And you're being your best person, and you've let it out. And then, you know, um, equality in pay, where's that go now? Well, look, I so look it's, at, a, it's a crazy I, I, situation, see, isn't it? It's, look, it's, it's such a – it's got so many layers to it. 
I look at it and I just think that if it came down to those, uh, the women netballers in Australia taking this decision on their own without actually consulting their employers, they all deserve to be sacked as far as I'm concerned. Because, you know, you mm. don't decide. Mm. You're the players. You don't negotiate this. You want to get paid. We've got a sponsor. That's one, that's one side of it to me. Um, the other side of it, of course, is that you've got to remember that this woman hasn't spoken out. She's told her teammates they've taken this up on her behalf. So she hasn't actually spoken mm. publicly. The other thing is, it doesn't appear to me from what I've read that Gina Reinhardt, who is described as Australia's richest person, has been able or given a honourable way out of this. Now, you know, you're talking about somebody who's a corporate raider. She's like any cock at the top of all of these corporations who's worth billions of dollars. Matt, they don't get there by being nice. They get there by ripping mm. people off and they rip, you know, the mining company is not a nice company. Let's be honest about it. Whether they've paid any royalties to the traditional or to the um, traditional people, who, who knows about it in that? Probably haven't. But in any kind of confrontation like this, you've got to give people an out, a dignified out, where they can actually look at it and go, okay, I'm going to come out of this and still smell a little bit sweetly, right? And if you don't do that, then you've got the standoff happening. And the standoff doesn't work for anyone here. I would hope that adults could actually just resolve this. I mean, all it would take when you look at it on the surface is, does, does, does Gina Reinhardt apologise? Does she apologise for what her father said? Because I don't think that's right. You know, I'm not apologising for something my old man who's dead said 40 years ago, right? Why the hell no. should I? No, it, I it wasn't me I that said it. I, I, look... I, I, I heard today, you know, somebody say that um, it's unknown whether Reinhardt has ever publicly spoken about how she feels about her father's comments. Well, it doesn't really matter. No, I don't think it does Because it's not her. It's not her. You know, is it? It's, you know, like my, my, my dad's 83. I bet there's things that people could bring up that he said um, and they could say, defend it. What do you think about it? And the only option, see, the, the problem with that situation too is, is um, she might say, yes, I agree with him. You know what I'm saying, right? You know, so you got to give her, the, you got to give her the option, but you don't know what she's going to say. You can't make it a situation where there's only one thing she can say, right? But okay, so you got, if you're going to try and smooth it over, what you also need to remember is, is, is Gina Reinhart even involved in a small sponsorship deal like fifteen million dollars in the context of the company she runs? Was she even involved in it? Yeah, you're right. Did she show up for a PR day one day? I mean, you know, this this could totally be a PR uh, company who 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 she either owns or runs her stuff. They could have done the whole thing without her. Mm. Made that decision on her behalf. So I don't I don't know what the outcome I don't know what the outcome should be. I mean, fair enough what the young girl said to her friends, as you say, who then went and said uh, to management, "This is the, the 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 problem we have." Was it really a problem, or was it just a conversation that was had in the first place? And then and now you've got a, a, a sport who, you know, just needs the money. They need the deal. Yeah, they do. They need a sponsorship. Yeah. They need certainty, futures. But all these women deserve to be paid more. No one's saying they don't. And then this all happens over a, a statement. That happened privately in a room somewhere. See, the other thing that I, I, what, know, I don't get my head bizarre. around. I don't get my head around as well is that you know if you're going to you know this is a, a rabbit hole. That do you really want to crawl down? Because if that's the case, there is no corporate anywhere in the world that is squeaky clean. You know, the banks sit here, like, I, I'm, I'm offended when I look at ANZ and they, they get sponsored bits in the news saying, oh, you know, they've given a kid $200 to buy a cricket bat and play cricket. You make a billion a year, you thieves. You know, yeah. you rip us off with fees and interest yeah. rates and you suck all the money out of the country. You give $200 back and we're meant to sit there and go, you're the good guys. Corporates get involved in sport because they want to wash themselves clean is why they do it, right? They spend F all money and get massive kudos because they come across like, oh, look at ANZ, they're the good guys. They put money into cricket. They're not the good guys. They've never been the good guys. They are doing this for no. pragmatic purpose to make themselves look like the good guys. So what are you going to do? Are you going to then go, McDonald's have just poured money into the Phoenix. We know that their food causes diabetes. It causes obesity. It's What do you stop that now? I see, I, I just think that it's just a huge, you know, it's like, for example, the, you know, the climate change protesters who won't go and glue themselves to the Chinese embassy, the biggest polluters on the planet. You know, but they'll glue themselves to the motorway and stop you going to work. There's, there's, it's such a grey area in every single aspect to the argument. 
But going back to the netball, I just don't know how they get out of this because they've backed her into a corner where no. she's not going to show weakness from here. She's going to say, if you get yourselves another sponsor. Maybe it's actually a good opportunity for another Australian company who has got a heart, who has got a good record to turn around and go, hey, we'll take over this. But at the moment, you're going, well, hang on a second. If You know, I, I go in there and sponsor it. Well, what, what say one of the women netballers decides that I've done something and don't like it? I mean, it's, I'm not trivialising what she well, said. Well, that's where does it end? That's where what, does yeah, it end? I suppose There's it's always good. something that could, uh, could come up from somewhere that someone may, or even it be perceived that people may perceived. have issues with. Yeah. Look, I don't know what they do. I mean, the, the, the best outcome would be is that they sit down. Uh, if anyone needs to apologise, that's what happens. They have a conversation, and the sponsorship comes back. Yeah, that would be the Wouldn't ideal it? outcome. But I mean, is and it, it doesn't is... see it doesn't. It, there hasn't been a big enough blow up between two individuals that hold the purse strings. In my opinion, this, this doesn't sound personal in any way. Yeah, right. See, that's Surely what I did this as could well. Be worked out. That's what but I did as well. This could be worked out. There needs to be an inquiry. Well, uh, there's got to be a review at the end of it, please. New Zealand at rugby point, have got to be involved here, don't they? I mean, they are the experts. At some point, they've got to be involved. All right, let's we finish. We need more reviews. Let's you fi- know it, I know it, we all know it. Let's finish. Let's be positive about your Liverpool team. What happened? We need a review. <laughs> <laughs> let's be positive about the climate change in Twizel. Climate change, yeah. No, the climate's on the way up this week. Yeah. And I think that's the beauty of it. Look, I, I, I've got to be honest with you, Martin. I'm not a climate change denier. I'm a climate lover. Yeah, I know, because you want it to you get know, warmer. I want to do my thing for the climate. Yeah. I, 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 I really do. But um, there's only so far we can go, Martin. We're a tiny we're a tiny country. We're a tiny place. Enjoy it while it's here. Let's not worry about it not being here. Just enjoy and it while it's here. And our lives out with this climate change stuff. How about you just go out and have a look at it for a while? Yeah. And then if enough people go out and have a look at it, I don't want to get too philosophical here, all, all zen-like, but if enough people go out there and enjoy it, surely they're going to want to look after it more. You know, people talk about climate change and they want to cut down and make us run different cars and they want to make all these different changes. I'll tell you what I'd like to see, a plea to the climate-loving public. If you want to start somewhere and you're buying into it all, separate your rubbish at the tip. Yeah. How Every time that? I go to the landfill, all I see is rubbish all mixed in there. I live in a place where there's no rubbish delivery, so we've got to drive it in ourselves. And if we separate it, we don't pay. Hey, it's not that hard. People this? won't do it. I've got a great text, and Stuart has texted in. Hello, Stuart. Thanks for your text. He says, Martin, China is the biggest polluter because it's the biggest population. The US is two point is 2.2 a bigger polluter per capita, so is New Zealand. What a stupid argument, Stuart. What an absolutely stupid argument. China's the biggest polluter because it's got the biggest population. Stuart, the sentence is China is the biggest polluter. Full stop. So what that we're bigger yeah, per capita? It, forget There's about three per capita. Million, five forget million about us, head mate. of population. No, the biggest polluters. Forget about head of population That's and it. the rest of it. Get I them think to the stop. numbers will tell Stuart that New Zealand's polluting to the tune of about 0.003% hey, of the we're global emissions. Hey, but we're 2.2% per capita worse than area. they That's are. That's not man for man. For God's sake, mate. Stuart's, Stuart's lost the plot. Take I'm out China the and you're in the US. I States. hope Stuart, if he knows them stats, knows which plastics to recycle. That's yeah. all I've got to say. Resurrection Distillery. How's it brewing, mate? Oh, no, going very well, Martin. We had about uh, we had about 20 people come out and see us over the weekend. Brilliant. Over a long weekend. Okay. It sort of interrupted my weekend, you know. I was just sort of mucking around here doing things here and there. People kept showing up. It was fantastic. It's great to meet people, people from all over the world, enjoying the climate. There you go. They were loving the beautiful weather. Resurrection and distillery. Is this global warming? Um, well, I hope it's called summer it's in my book. It snowed last week. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll talk again next Monday. Resurrection Distillery. Resurrection Distillery on Facebook. Stuart, I'm not calling you stupid. I think your argument's stupid, mate, is what I think. I mean, for God's sake. So hang on a second. So this room that I'm in here is the biggest polluter on the planet, right? This room here. But that room there next to me, there's only one person lives in that room, but they they produce 2.2 times more than I do in this room. Well, why don't we solve the biggest pollution room first? Wouldn't that be better in the long run?